Well, I have this unique ability to uh, make such wonderful titles. This week, I have titled the sermon, and get ready for this. This is going to be a shocker. This is a good one. Are you ready? (laughs) Father's Day 2021. (laughs) I just love those catchy titles like that. Father's Day 2021. As I was writing, I don't know what that was. Hello? Is it me? Okay, okay. I I, am. I had a Father's Day celebration last night. The kids took me out uh, to, it used to be called Wellverse, now it's called Willie and Reds. Had all my kids and all my grandkids, and we got to sit down and have a meal together. Uh, her dad was there, her brothers and sisters, but they don't count for me, just my kids and grandkids. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm feeding my grandkids, and I am just so happy and so blessed to be a father. And this Father's Day, I want to give God the praise for the fact that he allowed me to be a father. He's allowed me the chance to raise children. But I also want to admit to you that um, it's a lot harder than it looks to raise children. And I look back and I'm not one of those person or people that says I wouldn't have done anything differently. Because knowing what I know now, if I had known that then, I would have done some things differently. And I admit to you, when I was writing this message this morning, actually, I wasn't writing it this morning. I went through it this morning, but I wrote it several weeks ago. Uh, Anybody who came by my office would have seen me sitting there just crying, just bawling, because it brought back a whole lot of memories, memories of me raising my children. I'm going to share some of those memories with you this morning, and I hope that you can relate to them, the good ones, and I hope that if you've experienced any of the ones that broke my heart, that you'll be mended as well. I'd like to begin this morning by looking at how the first seven chapters of Proverbs reflect on the training that parents should be sharing with their children. Now, uh, I'll go to Proverbs Don't be worried. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read all seven chapters. Okay, so so don't get scared. We're going to start there in Proverbs chapter one, verse number eight, where we read these words. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. In essence, we can teach them, but they've got a responsibility to listen. And then just another chapter over. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1, we read these words. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commandments within you, he's got a responsibility. Accept them, store them up within him. Go into Proverbs chapter 3, and you can still find that over on the same page. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart. Are you starting to see a, a pattern here? How about Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 1? Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. We are sharing, they are receiving. It's it's part of the process of raising children. Or Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1, where we read these words. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen well to my words of insight. Or how about Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 to 5, a little bit longer one. It says, my son, if you put up security for your neighbor, if you struck hands and pledged for another, if you've been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son. He's he's showing him how to live. He's showing him how to have a better life. He says, do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you've fallen into your neighbor's hands, go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Or Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1, where we read these words. My son, keep my words. Store up my commandments within you. In these verses, I'll stop it there. It's pretty clear to me that fathers are supposed to take an interest in how their children grow up. And children are supposed to take an interest in what their fathers and mothers have to teach them. It's an important relationship. Children are going to live longer if they learn some wisdom from their parents. It's just that simple. They don't say, 
don't play in the street because they want to take away your fun. They say don't play in the street because they love you and they don't want you to turn flat. It's that kind of relationship. They love you. They care about you. I think the book of Deuteronomy, and that's way back toward the beginning if you want to turn in there. The book of Deuteronomy sums the instructions up pretty well as far as particularly when a father is supposed to be sharing things with their children. And I'm kind of amazed by this because it covers pretty much everything there in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse number 19. Look at what it says. It says, teach them. Now it's talking about the truths of God in specific, but teach them to your children. Talking about them, once again, the truths of God. Talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, what's left? When you're sitting, when you're walking, when you're laying down, when you isn't he basically saying it's your responsibility to be constantly teaching your children? Showing them through your life, telling them through your words, helping them to grow and mature and understand. It's our responsibility as parents to lay truth out there, and it's the children's responsibility to be little sponges and suck it all in. You know, unfortunately, as I look back on raising my children, I find that I might have wished some of our time away. Let me explain what I mean. I think oftentimes we act like our only desire is to see our children bamoose. That's, that's like a funky word that means go away. Grow up, get out of here, hit the street, get a house of your own, get a life of your own. And you say, oh, no, 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 I, I just love having my children at home. I would have never done that. Rather than cherishing the opportunities we have to spend time with our children, to train them, to help them to grow, we wish our relationship away saying things like, I'll sure be glad when she sleeps through the night. You ever said that before? Kind of wishing their life away. Or how about this? I'll sure be glad when we no longer have to mess with these bottles. Wash them, sterilize them, put them together, scrub them out with brushes. You remember those days. I'll sure be glad when he can feed himself. You ever been there? It's like you're trying to shovel it in. You're trying to eat yours. And he's one, I did that last night with, with Remy. I was shoveling food. And didn't go too well, so I got the ice cream. It wasn't a problem at all. How about this one? I'll sure be glad when we get out of this terrible two stage. <laughs> the terrible twos are grabbing everything. They can now run instead of walk. It's just a challenging stage of life. You wish life away. I'll sure be glad when I can get rid of this stupid diaper bag. I felt that one. You feel like you're carrying the whole house on your back in order to have all the things, diapers and wipes and bottles and all the things that go, another change of clothes when the diaper doesn't work. You know, the, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. I'll sure be glad when I can get rid of this diaper bag or I'll sure be glad when he's potty trained. I'll sure be glad. <coughs> I had one kid that I potty trained, wasn't even my own. He was like, four or five years old. It should have been pretty well along this potty training thing. And his mom had to leave him at our house. And I don't know if you guys are over practicing or what, but <coughs> I was taking care of this little guy. I won't use any names because he's still very much alive and kicking. He's a nurse now. So <laughs> maybe I taught him for that too. Anyway, he, he was squatted over in the corner. And I said, do you have to go to the bathroom? He looked at me and said, no. He can talk. You should know what he's doing. You know. No. And he sat there and he filled his pants. And he got done. And he comes over and says, I need changed. <laughs> if you can tell me you're not going and tell me afterwards that you need change, you're too big for this. So I took him back to the bathroom and I handed him a diaper. And I said, you take those off. You clean yourself up and I'll help you put this on. <laughs> You should have seen it. Ew, ick, <laughs> That's going to come across weird on the video. <laughs> His mom came and got him at the end of that babysitting period. And she said, I don't know what you did, but my son was potty trained when he came home. 
It worked. I don't know if it worked for anybody else, but it worked for that little guy. And he is now a grown man, and he's, he's working as a nurse. So he's probably doing a lot of those things. How about this one? I'll sure be glad when she can dress herself. And then you finally get that, and you find the way they match, and you're thinking, what was I thinking? It's like, yeah, it's crazy. Or how about this? I'll sure be glad when he can tie his own shoes. You ever been there? It's like you tie them a gazillion times to keep coming untied. Mommy, can you tie me my shoes? Daddy, can you tie my shoes? Or I'll sure be glad when I can send them off to school so I can have some time alone. It just It's been five years. I'm, I'm ready for some time. Send him off to school. I'll sure be glad when he gets his license so he can drive himself to practice. And then you see the insurance bill and you think, what was I thinking? It's like, it's his life. I'll sure be glad when she heads off to college and we can repurpose her room. I've got some big ideas for my man cave. You, you know, ever, ever been there? I'll sure be glad when he gets out of college and gets a job so he can support himself. We think these things. It's, it's like we're wishing our lives away. We act like we can't wait for our kids to grow up and move away. That, that's how we act while they're growing up. Let me share with you some words from an individual who lived like this only to regret it. If I was a real good singer, I'd sing them for you. But as I share the words, you'll probably be able to sing it in your own head. So let's do that. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. He was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. <coughs> and the cats in the cradle, silver moon, little boy blue, the man in the moon. When you coming home, Dad, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. My son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And he walked away. But his smile never dimmed. He said, I'm going to be like him, yeah? Oh, darn it. You know I'm going to be like him. Well, he came from college just the other day. So much like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? I've long since retired. My son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle, and the kids had the flu. But it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. As I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you coming home, son? I don't know when. But we'll get together then, Dad. We're going to have a good time then. Friends, someday we'll be saying, I'll sure be glad when she calls. Someday we'll be saying, I'll sure be glad when he comes for a visit. At this point, we'll be wishing every precious moment that we wished away as our children was growing up, could come back again. Friends, the moments we have with our children as they grow up are precious. Each experience, each stage of life comes only once, and it must be lived as it happens, or it will be missed forever. I'm going to have to... Will you get me a Kleenex over there? Right there? If we don't live our lives to the fullest... We're going to wake up one day old, all alone, as we wonder where in the world our life is gone. I know, sorry guys, all this crying stuff making my nose run. And I'm sure I'm not done yet. The hard part hadn't even got here.
I was once reminded of this fact in an overwhelming way, a way that broke my heart. That's my son, by the way. We were sitting as a family talking, and Ben reminded me of the time he came into my office and I was working on my doctorate. And he asked me to teach him how to pitch. I don't know if you've ever done a doctorate, but you're reading from morning to night for four years. It's just crazy. I've been a pitcher the whole time that I was growing up, played ball, and wasn't half bad at it. That was me. When I had asked my dad to help me learn how to pitch at about that age, he told me that he never played ball, but it seemed to him all it would take was to learn to get the ball to go where you wanted it to. So he took me out to the side of the house. We had a rock chimney and he pointed to a spot on that chimney. And he said, you take that baseball and you throw at that spot until you can hit it every time. And then you go tell your coach that you want to be a pitcher. I was driven. I followed his instructions. I went out there and I threw at that house until that baseball turned soft. And that's a lot of throws. I followed his instruction. I went to the coach and lo and behold, I made his son mad for the rest of his life. He still doesn't like me much. Because all at once I was the pitcher and his son was no longer. Because <laughs> I learned to hit the mark on the wall. When Ben came to me and asked me to teach him how to pitch, I told him the same thing that my dad had told me. I put a gold diamond on the side of our brick house. It was brick then. And I told him to practice pitching at that mark until he could hit it every time if he wanted to be a pitcher. Well, he didn't keep at it at all. Soon decided to stop playing baseball altogether. He just, just stopped. Now, some 20 years later at that point, we're sitting at a table. And Ben asked me if I remember that day when he asked me to show him how to pitch. And I said, I did. Then he said, Dad, I never wanted to pitch. <laughs> this isn't me normally. I just wanted to come play catch with me. It broke my heart. I lost it then, just like I'm losing it now. Later that evening, I sat in my office and I wrote this letter to my son. Ben, I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes, wishing that I'd been better at spending time with you as you were growing up. I grew up very poor and I wanted to do better for you guys. I worked myself silly trying to climb the proverbial ladder of success so that I could provide more. Now, as I look back, I find that happiness comes not from bigger, not from better. True happiness is a result of learning to rejoice in the fact that you found a rung of the ladder that you're comfortable occupying. I long for that little boy to come ask me to play. I long for the talks that last till midnight. My heart's broken now that you wanted my time and I failed to give it to you. I allowed myself to let work become my life. I love you with all my heart and I would give my life for you and never flinch. I'm so sorry that I didn't do a better job spending time with you as you were growing up. I would throw away every degree I possess to have those days back again. Please know that you're loved. I'm sorry, you know I'm not normally like this. Sometimes I just can't help it. This is what Ben wrote back to me. Dad, please know that I didn't have a bad childhood. There will always be bumps in the road, but that's to be expected. But when you think about mistakes and the things you could have done better, don't forget to think about what you did do right. Here are a few of the good times I remember from childhood. First off, remember when Sarah and I were young and you used to sit between our bedrooms and tell us stories 
before we went to bed. Or the batting glove that you gave me the first time I hit the ball and ran to first base. Or how about that time that you and I spent hours in the woods with Grandpa looking for mushrooms? What about when you taught me how to shoot? We shot that 12 gauge until both of our arms were black and blue. How about our father's son kayaking trip down Blue River? What about the times when you taught me how to wire receptacles and lights in the house at Greensport? Dad, I still remember how to do that. What about you going to my football games in high school? Before that, I swear you didn't know a thing about football, nor did you care. But when I played, you were there. What about family camping trips? You'd get so mad on the way there and so mad on the way back. But at the campfires at night, everybody was happy. Do you remember when you were selling your motorcycle and you let me put my bike for sale right next to it? That meant the world to me. And yes, staying up till midnight, talking about everything and nothing at the same time was wonderful. Dad, when I think about my childhood, I'm not angry. I'm not set, upset. I just smile. So there was that one memory that came up the other day. Laugh out loud. I hated that stupid gold diamond. <laughs> but if you put that one memory next to all the good memories, it doesn't seem all that bad, does it? I'm sorry I hurt you with what I said. Dad, when I think about you, I think about all the good times. No, you're not a perfect dad. Nobody is. No one expects you to be. But dad, all in all, if I was grading my childhood, I'd give it an A. You did good. And as far as providing for a family, there are a ton of pressures I didn't know about. More than anyone could ever be able to prepare you for. It's hard to know what to do. And I need you to know that I understand that now more than you know. I love you, Dad. And please, please, please know that the one thing I always knew growing up, the one thing that I always felt was that I was loved no matter what. Love you, Ben. Friends, I'm far from a perfect dad. Look at that goatee. You know I wasn't thinking right. My prayer is that each of my children know I love them and that they know the God who loves them as well. I pray that the exhortations found in Proverbs have hit their mark. I pray as a father that my children might love not only me, but their heavenly father as well for their entire life so that we can spend eternity together. Let this prayer be ours this morning as we get ready to depart from this place. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Let's stand. Thank <laughs> you.